everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to one of my favorite videos that I haven't filmed it yet but I'm so excited to film. I've always been meaning to do more book recommendations just because I feel like because I only talk about the books that I've recently read that all the other ones just get stacked away and I feel like they don't get the love they deserve so I really want to do book recommendations based on like specific tropes and um, just things that you find in books that I love that I can recommend it to you. I really couldn't start with one that wasn't found family because found families are everything especially in fantasy books where everyone is dying everything is sad a good found family just makes all the difference it gives you hope and love and i just love it so much so i have nine books and then three manga series to talk about i think it's a good mix of all the books that i read anyway so without any further ado before i start into the list because i didn't want to mention the most obvious ones that everyone's read already and i didn't want to like mention them and those are like six of crows the raven boys and anything by cassandra claire they all have amazing found families but i feel like those are the ones that everyone has read but if you haven't really really good found family stories anyway i want to talk about the book that really made me want to film this video and that is the one i just recently finished and that is the long way to a small angry planet the found family in this book broke my heart i wasn't expecting too much from this book just because i mean that makes it sound bad but i just didn't know what to expect i just knew that i was going to fall in love with the characters and that definitely happened we follow our main character rosemary as she joins this crew this ragtag group of characters that are made up of all these different species that all have all these different customs and one of my favorite things in this book was watching them get to know each other and their customs and what flies for some people and seeing some things that humans love all these aliens think is so weird it's just so much fun because there's just something about all these characters accepting each other even if there are things they don't understand like fundamental things about each other that they don't understand because they're not the same species it's just <laughs> my heart it's such a good family that this book has they accept each other they're always there for each other they'll do anything for each other it's just such a good fan family story i will say that the plot really takes a back burner because this book is really about the relationships and the characters and i just i just love it i love it when there is a huge group of characters and we get to see not just this small group and this small group within the big group we also get to see people who may not like each other as much or people who are just beginning to know each other it's so intricate and i just love this story so much i cannot wait to keep reading we just got an announcement for the fourth book i'm so excited i know the second book doesn't follow these characters i think we only follow one of these characters but I've been told that the other characters have cameos, so I'm really excited for those. Let's just get the obvious one out of the way. I feel like, would this be a video without the Way of Kings in it? Listen, Bridge 4. Need I say more? Bridge 4 broke my heart. How do I say this? How do I put this into words? At the start of this book, our main character, Kaladin, is not in a good place. He is extremely depressed. He's being sold off as a slave and he's just lost his will to live. And when he gets that will back, he just becomes a completely different person. And you can see that because he's such a loving person. And you really get to see that with Bridge 4 because he sees people just like him that have given up. Basically, he's in a bridge crew, which means they're the people who carry bridges and they're in direct line of fire so people don't survive. So all these people have given up and they've just prepared themselves to die. And then Kaladin comes in and he gives them hope. He gives them a family. Bridge 4 is literally one of the best found families just because they're all so inherently different. You also get to see different cultures because of Rock and Lopin. When you start reading, they're all basically the same in the way that they don't want Kaladin's help. They're too scared to feel hope again just because that's been kind of kicked out of them when they see everyone around them dying. And Kaladin comes in and Kaladin just forces the life back into them. And I'm so excited to see more of Bridge 4 in Rhythm of 4. This community is like one of the best parts of this book. And the fact that we get to see it slowly build this first book over the thousand pages is just so rewarding at the end i can talk about bridge 4 forever so i'm just gonna move on i highly recommend this book for so many reasons but bridge 4 is a huge huge reason okay then we have one of my favorite series of all time that i feel like i haven't talked about a lot because stormlight kind of took over my life but that's the diviners by libba bray i am obsessed with this series i took a break from booktube for like the first few months of this year and the first video i made was when king of crows came out because i was so excited and i had to film my reaction to it because the book just means so much to me this series is not for everyone the historical setting puts people off i feel like this is basically set in new york 1920s which is i didn't know like i've read the great gatsby and i loved the setting in that but this book told me that i would read any book set in that time period because i love 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 flapper era i just love reading about it anything these characters would be doing i just am obsessed with but let's just get into the found family aspects in this book we follow a group called the diviners they're basically people who've been experimented on and have 
specific powers and they just find each other in the most amazing ways. In the first book we only have our main character Evie who can touch objects and read them basically and then slowly all these characters find each other in the most organic ways and then those relationships are just dealt with with so much care. Each relationship is just so solid the same way with The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet but even on a bigger scale because this cast of characters is a lot bigger. Each character has a specific relationship with the other and even though this is multiple POV you want to read from at least I definitely wanted to read from each and every point of view especially something that the fourth book did where they split all the characters up in like groups that didn't particularly either talk to each other or care about each other and they forced them to get along I love it so much I love the diversity in this group as well we have so many different ethnicities and so many different sexual orientations that are in this book this is one of my favorite books of all time and I love these characters to death they're not perfect they make stupid mistakes our main character Evie learns so much and she's so self-centered at the start of this book but she goes through so much and these characters go through it with her and they lose so many people and it's just it's such a beautiful series I love it so much I feel like I had to mention at least one J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman series but really both Illuminae and Aurora and Aurora why is Aurora so hard for me to say both the series I love the found families in them but really if you were looking for a found family Aurora Rising has a lot more of it this premise is basically about our main character Tyler not being able to choose his own team and being left with all the dregs that no one else wanted and them having to form this motley crew and save the world which is literally one of my favorite things I will say the second book wasn't really my favorite and this is a lot more lighthearted and fun compared to Illuminae I feel like that is definitely the superior series but these characters and this found family is so fun each character is so different and has their own distinct personality and has their own relationship with each other and I cannot wait for that to get explored even more in book three just because they went through so much shit in this book and I feel like they've really fractured a lot more and I cannot wait for the third book to bring them all back together also just because this book ended on like the biggest cliffhanger it shouldn't be allowed but I'm not surprised that Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman did it but yeah this is the next book a lot more fun and lighthearted. okay let's get another obvious one out of the way House on the Cerulean Sea listen the found family I really just plugged this to my friend to get her to read it as an Aziraphale and Crowley AU where Lucifer is their child. If you don't want to read that, I don't know what you want from life, but the found family in this book is unlike anything else that I've ever read. I think it's really easy for especially young adult to have found family groups that are all the same age. More often than not, families don't work like that. There are different roles that each group has, especially like the role between parents and children. You don't really get to see in YA, but you see this to such an extent in this book. Our main character basically has to visit this at-risk orphanage, which is filled with all these volatile children one of them like I said is the Antichrist there's just so many adorable children who are so misunderstood and the headmaster basically takes them in because no one else wants them and when our main character joins their family it just feels like their family is complete and oh my god it's just such an adorable read so good. Speaking of a found family where the characters are all different ages, the next one I want to talk about is the one in Foundryside. You get to see really the found family elements in the second book, Shorefall, a lot more just because there is a time jump between the first and the second book. So all these characters have really gotten used to each other and really just connected. So in this, our main character is a thief. She's always been alone and through all these different circumstances, she's thrown in with all these other characters and together they just form this amazing bond. So these characters are really just thrown together and put through like so much. And you really get to see in the second book how much they've grown. I love how all of them are so different. We have Sanzia and Berenice who are in an adorable relationship and they support each other and love each other so much. We also have Orso who is like a grandfather figure to Berenice. He's been her mentor figure her entire life. Orso is so grumpy and angry all the time but he is so soft inside. I love it. Then we have Gregor who is the most different. He has the most to lose basically. He's at a position of power at the start of the book and he really has to fight between what's right and what he's known his entire life. He goes through so much in the first two books especially in the second book. He is put through so much in the second book and the way the rest of them are there to support him and be there for him and just I love how unlike likely this group of characters are, how different they are from each other and still how strong their bonds are and I cannot wait to see them even stronger in book three hopefully fingers crossed like I really hope they get a happy ending especially Gregor because my baby's been through so much and I just want him to be happy okay all of them I want all of them to be happy that is what I want from book three and I cannot wait for it to come out next we have another series that I feel like I don't talk about enough at least this year I haven't talked about it enough at all and that is the Shadow of the Fox trilogy this is one of my favorite trilogies I feel like this is 
of one of those trilogies that I feel like was made for me, for my tastes, for the things that I love in anime, in manga, in books. This is basically an anime in book form and this has one of those typical, if you've seen Inuyasha, there is that typical trope where two of the characters meet in a weird way and are given this quest and they are traveling and they just pick up random people along the way. That basically happens in this book and I didn't know I needed it in book form until I read it. All these characters are just so different. Our main character Yumeko is a half kitsune. She's been sheltered her entire life and she just really is so innocent and wants to know about the world. She's just so inherently good. And then we have Tatsumi who has lived this really tortured life. He is connected to this blade that has this essence of a demon and if he's not strict and just like in control of himself all the freaking time that demon will take control of him. So he has had the most disciplined upbringing. Basically homeboy hasn't had a lot of fun and then he meets Yumeko and they just romance that's slow burn <sighs> okay anyway but as they're going on their journey they kind of recruit a uh, ronin who is basically a samurai who is kicked out or fell into bad graces so he's like one of my favorite characters we also have this lord and the shrine maiden and this group of characters is like everything they're so different again i love it when characters and fan families are so different from each other but they don't care because you just complete each other in ways where someone is weak the other person is strong love that so much and this book definitely has that i'm still not over the ending of this book i'm not over it it destroyed my soul i understand why it was done because it was also a really anime thing to do but I just love it so much and I highly highly recommend this I am biased towards anything that is Japanese inspired because I love anime like I said and I just love following that time period I love anything with shinobi and samurai and oni and like all the different creatures I just love it so I really recommend it it's such a fun series with the most devastating ending next is another recent read that I feel like if you're looking for something a lot more fun I would recommend skyward just because the friend group in this is so much fun especially because our main character Spencer has been alone mostly alone she has like one friend but she's been alone she's been told that her dreams aren't valid because her father was a coward she's been told that she would never be able to do the one thing she wants to do more than anything else and then she gets the chance and she is introduced to all these characters who at first don't know who she is and then when they find out they still love her and support her and seeing her be accepted for the first time is so beautiful like any kind of sports book any kind of book where each character has to hold each other up i have two other recommendations that i still have to give that are similar but seeing how far our main character has grown like spensa at the start is all closed off and she hides between like aggressive one-liners about death and blood but she just slowly has to open up to these people and they slowly accept her and i just hope we get more of these characters and their group in book three because i just miss them so much and finally the last one say what you will about the series but the found family in this book is like unparalleled and that is the foxhole court every time i mention foxhole court i feel like people are gonna come for me but the found family in this book is literally my favorite thing about the series i feel like i haven't talked about this in so long but this is basically about our main character neil who is hiding from something we find out later and he wants to play this made-up game called exe more than anything else and he gets recruited by this university team to join this ragtag group called the Palmetto State University Foxes and it's about him fitting in there and our boy goes through so much and that team is just there for him like they have their ups and downs they do a lot of shit that I feel like happens in real life all the time in universities which I don't condone at all and I feel like they're not really questioned but they are talked about um, and they have consequences most of the time by the end there's this scene in the third book where Neil thinks he's going to be alone but then all of them just like are there for him I I love that scene literally sometimes i just go back and read that scene because i love it so much and i love these characters i would love to reread these books i feel like each book gets better i think i gave this one like a 3.5 then i gave the second one like 0.5 more and then i gave the third one like a 4.5 i love the series it has such a special place in my heart because these characters crawl their way into your heart and then they just like stay there okay let's move into the three manga series before i start there is an honorable mention with this one as well i just didn't want to talk about the same series over and over and that's fruit Fruits Basket. Fruits Basket has the, one of the best friend family tropes ever. I just feel like I talked that series to death. So we're gonna move on and talk about the three other series that I was so in love with. The first one is Waiting for Spring. When I tell you I was obsessed 
obsessed with Waiting for Spring, I mean it. I read the first 10 volumes in like a month and they were just everything. So we start with our main character, Mitsuki, who has tried really hard to make friends in the past, but it's just never worked out for her. So she's kind of given up. She's always alone. And then she meets these four guys on the basketball team who are like the most popular guys. So this is a basketball, like a sport manga, but I feel like we don't focus on the sport too much. Like there are a few tournaments, but it's pretty scattered around. It's more about these characters and their friendship with each other. So Mitsuki meets these guys and is kind of thrown into their world and they just help her come out of her shell and she makes all these new friends because she's taking chances and there's this adorable soft romance between her and this guy I just love so much. It's so cute. They have this amazing friendship and then her childhood best friend comes back and causes drama. I love this series so much. For something like just really fun and slice of life, I feel like this is a great manga series to pick up. And then the other one I have is Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun. This is volume 10 just because it was the one on top and I didn't want to lift everything off. This is one of my favorite shoujo anime of all time because it's so funny. It literally had me laughing, like hollering out loud. It was so funny. So I picked up the manga. I still, I think I'm on volume 7. It's very different because it's like one single panel and it's just like short stories almost that kind of lead to a bigger picture just because there isn't really a linear story in this it's not a romance even though our main character is like obsessively in love with this guy so what the story is basically our main character Chiyo is in love with this guy called Nozaki so when she goes and she tells him he misunderstands her because he is a manga car so he thinks she means that she likes his manga he gives her a signature and gives her a job so she starts working with him and then they meet all these personalities like this friend group is so different like there's literally all these personalities like I say like they're all so funny in their own ways you can see three of them here we have the female prince character who all the girls love and the guys are all like jealous of we have the really mean best friend who like is so clueless and like has no idea how much people actually hate her we also have the pretty boy who's like really shy and says all these obnoxious things and then gets like worked up about it we also have so many other people as well in this friend group they mature so much because when the two of them become friends they bring all their friends together too and all those friends have relationships with each other and it's just so fun i can't wait to keep reading and rewatch the anime i think it's just on netflix like it's been on netflix for like a month i think so i would highly recommend you go check it out it's so funny and finally the last one i felt like i left this for last even though this is my favorite this is like my obsession in life but i love this for at the end because it doesn't have a printed version which i'm so sad about but it is kono ota tomare this manga this anime i highly recommend this anime please go watch it it's so good it's just everything this has my favorite romance of all time this has one of my favorite friend groups of all time so this is basically it's a music club manga so it's basically about our main character trying to keep their koto club afloat a koto is like a traditional japanese instrument and he's like the only person in the group left so he has to like recruit people so he recruits these delinquents and each character has this amazing backstory they also have this koto prodigy who really is terrible to them at the start but like she slowly thaws and there's, there's this romance and all these characters that have terrible pasts and get second chances like the redemption arcs in this manga i love this group so much like i said i love any kind of sport music manga where there's a lot of practicing and these characters want to get better so fast because when something matters to them so much it starts mattering to you at least it matters to me as well so like i was literally holding my breath when they were performing because at the end they go to nationals because they want to win the koto championship it's literally everything I don't read manga online just because I get distracted really fast and I because I'm on the computer all the time so I try not to read too much online but I literally have read this manga start to finish maybe four times and it's still being updated so like every month I'm just like looking for the new update because literally I love these characters so much and if my ship I'll find a nice picture of them to put here but if my ship doesn't get together I will cry I have not been so invested in a ship in a very long time so i think that's everything so in the comments let me know if there are any fan families that i didn't mention that i haven't read i would love any kind of recommendation honestly and let me know if you love any of these as well and let me know if i put any of these books on your tbr that is all i have for this video all my links are down below thank you so much for watching i will see you guys in my next video goodbye